A New Kind of Wild by Zara Gonzalez Wong. Ren lived in a little white house on the edge of El Yunque. His days were filled with green and dirt and rocks and mud. All the bits of nature and magic a life lived on the edge of wild offers. Every day, Ren adventured with dragons and chased unicorns. He feasted with fairies and campaigned with kings. And every night, Ren fell asleep to the flickering of fireflies and a chorus of kokis. It was a place of endless possibility where anything he imagined became real, at least until bedtime. This was his home. Until the day it wasn't. Ren found himself in a brick and cement city. The friendly sounds of his forest were replaced by the mechanical creaks and beeps and buzzes of a place filled with people and progress. It was too loud and too fast. It made Ren's head fill up with everything and nothing. There was no room left for magic, no room left for wild. Without his wild, Ren was lonely. Ava, who lived upstairs, was never lonely. She loved her building and she loved her city. It was a place of constant change, with people moving through it like an endless parade. There was always something to see or do. And best of all, there was always someone to share it with. So when Ava saw Ren, she ran down to meet him. I'm Ava, she said. She asked him who he was and how he got there. If he had brothers, a father, a mother. If he liked the city or why he didn't. She asked him so many things so quickly he thought his head would explode. When she finally stopped for a breath, Ren tried to tell her why the city wasn't for him. But all Ava heard was a challenge. Ava pulled him from the stoop and into the busy city. She led him down colorful streets and sidewalks. They peeked into alleys, splashed in hydrants, and tried to find the rhythm of the streets. But all Ren saw was gray, and all he heard was the screeching of brakes and the honking of horns. It was nothing like home. When Ava caught up to Ren, she asked him what was wrong. There's no magic here, he said. No wild. Everything is exactly what it is. You're wrong, Ava said. Hadn't he heard the song of the city? Hadn't he seen the color in the streets? She'd spent all day showing him. How could he not see? If only he would try a little harder, she thought. But Ren was tired of trying, so he went back inside. Homesickness swept over him like a wave, and he felt lonelier than ever. Outside was a whole new world, one he didn't belong to. As he stared out the window, Ren saw Ava skipping across the sidewalk. She moved through her city like he had moved through his wild with an air of possibility flickering around her. How did Ava do it? Ren wondered. Maybe she could show him how. Sorry I left, Ren said when he found her. I just miss home. I've never lived anywhere else, and everything is so different here. I've only lived in the city, Ava said. I can't imagine living anywhere else. What is it like? So Ren told her about his wild, about the green and the trees and the rocks and the mud, and about the magical creatures that played there. 
He spun a tale of fairies and fantasy that he just couldn't see on these drab city blocks. And finally, Ava understood what was missing. She brought Ren down to the basement of their building, showed him how the shadows could shapeshift, and introduced him to creatures who lived in the unlikeliest of places. Then she took him up, past Mr. Borges in apartment 4B, past the empty apartment with the red door, past stacked boxes and peeling wallpaper, all the way to the very top. She told him that the city had a rhythm and the music it played could be a lullaby or a salsa. Listen, she said as she pulled him outside. The sounds that were so jarring below softened into something almost musical. With the city spread out before them, Ava showed Wren how bricks could become beautiful. It was a new kind of wild. And this time, he could see it. The end. Hope you enjoyed this story read by me, Star. Until next time, keep reading.